Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm having problems with getting YouTube to start. Give me one second. How are you this morning? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. All right, family, give me one second. I'm gonna have to try to do this all over again. Let me just do this. See, I don't know what's going on. Having technical difficulties every which way today. I don't want to miss you too. I don't know what's going on. All right, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do YouTube today, family, which is not good. That means I've got to download in the stream. All right, no YouTube. I don't know why. All right, family, we're just going to go with Facebook this morning. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. It's unfortunate. That means I got to download and upload and all that kind of stuff this morning. But let me just uh, speak to my family this morning here on Facebook. Good morning, family. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, today is Monday, May 20th, 2024. Sorry, family. I can readjust the camera now that I can't start YouTube. It's 9.04 a.m. Eastern. And we are up to Leviticus chapter 5 this morning. We will be sticking with the Amplified Bible. It is Monday. It is a brand new week. So we have to pray over our week. Pray over our day, our lives, our family members, everything concerning us and attached to us. And I'm going to get right into prayer because like I said, I'm having multiple technical difficulties this morning. So I have got to get myself together. I have things to do today as we all do. All right, so let's pray. Let's get right into the reading of the word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you so much for waking us up this morning, Lord. I thank you for bringing us safely through yet another weekend, God. I thank you for today, May 20th, 2024. Father, I thank you that you saw fit to wake us up this morning, Lord. I thank you that you preserved us. Father, I ask that you continue to keep your hand upon us, O oh Lord. Anoint us, Lord. Protect us, lead us, guide us, shelter us. Father, I thank you for everything that you've ever done in our lives. I thank you for each and every person that is on here with me live. Father, I thank you for those that will join later and the, those that will watch the replay. Father, I ask that you will bless us and our households and our bloodlines, maternal and paternal, from the oldest to the youngest, Lord. As we go throughout the course of this day and this week and the rest of our lives, Lord God, I pray that you keep us safe from all accidents seen and unseen keep us from all forms of hurt harm and destruction father order our steps cause us to be in the right place at the right time cause us to be far away from calamity and chaos lord i ask that you will dispatch your heavenly angels send your angels out before us to lead us and guide us father let us be surrounded by angels father cause your angels to go forth and work together for our good cause all things to work together for our good lord everything concerning us and everything attached to us oh god father i lift up the children before you this morning and i ask that you bless the children keep a hedge of protection around the children lord god father i ask that you continue to bless the children academically those that are in school anoint their minds for learning give them a love of learning oh god and bring everything back to their remembrance that they will finish their school year and exams on a strong and powerful note, Lord. And I ask that you anoint my mind for thinking, Father, give me clarity and focus. Anoint my mouth for speaking, oh God. Father, I ask that you will give each and every one of us revelation and wisdom into your word. Help us to apply the word of God to our lives, Lord. Father, use our lives for your glory and show us your glory in greater measure. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. All right, family, here we go. Leviticus chapter five, the law of guilt offerings. And it reads, Amplified Bible. If anyone sins after he hears a public adjuration, a solemn command to testify when he is a witness, whether he has seen or otherwise known something, if he fails to report it, then he will bear his guilt and be held responsible. 
or if someone touches any ceremonially unclean thing, whether the carcass of an unclean wild animal or the carcass of an unclean domestic animal or the carcass of an unclean creeping or of unclean creeping things, even if he is unaware of it, whatever kind it may be, and he becomes unclean, but he is unaware of it. When he recognizes it, he will be guilty. Or if anyone swears an oath thoughtlessly or impulsively aloud that he will do either evil or good in whatever manner a person may speak thoughtlessly or impulsively with an oath, but he is unaware of it, when he recognizes it, he will be guilty in one of these. So it shall be when a person is guilty in one of these that he shall confess the sin he has committed. He shall bring forth his guilt offering to the Lord for the sin which he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf for his sin. But if he cannot afford a lamb, then he shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons as his guilt offering for his sin to the Lord one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. He shall bring them to the priest who shall offer first the one for the sin offering and shall nip its head at the front of its neck, but shall not sever it completely. He shall also sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. The second bird he shall prepare as a burnt offering according to the ordinance. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf for the sin which he has committed, and it will be forgiven him. But if he cannot afford to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he shall bring as his offering for his sin the tenth part of an ephah a fine flour as a sin offering. He shall not put olive oil or incense on it, for it is a sin offering. He shall bring it to the priest who shall take a handful of it as a memorial portion and offer it up in smoke on the altar with the offerings by fire to the Lord. It is a sin offering. In this way, the priest shall make atonement for him for the sin which he has committed in one of these things, and it will be forgiven him. Then the rest shall be for the priest, like the grain offering. Verse 14, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, if a person commits a breach of faith and sins unintentionally against the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring his guilt offering to the Lord, a ram without blemish from the flock, valued by you in shekels of silver, that is the shekel of the sanctuary as a guilt offering. He shall make restitution for the sin which he has committed against the holy thing and shall add a fifth of the ram's value to it and give it to the priest. The priest shall then make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering and he shall be forgiven. Verse 17, now if anyone sins and does any of the things which the Lord has forbidden, though he was not aware of it, still he is guilty and shall bear his punishment. He is then to bring to the priest a ram without blemish from the flock according to your valuation for a guilt offering. In this way, the priest shall make atonement for him regarding the error which he committed unintentionally and did not know it. And he shall be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. He was certainly guilty before the Lord. Amen and amen. And that concludes Leviticus chapter 5. That was the Amplified Bible. We have four footnotes this morning. The first one starts at verse number one. Verse number one reads, if anyone sins after he hears a public adjuration, that's a solemn command to testify. All right, so the footnote here says, um, literally the voice of an oath, or this, it says, this refers to a public announcement calling for witnesses to testify. All right, verse four, next footnote. Or if anyone swears an oath thoughtlessly or impulsively allowed, here's your footnote, impulsively allowed, that he will do either evil or good. So we're not supposed to be swearing oaths. It says evil or good. It says uh, if he swears an oath with his lips. All right, next footnote, verse number seven. But if he cannot afford a lamb, the footnote here is on can afford, and the footnote says literally if his hand cannot reach enough for a lamb. 
All right, last footnote, verse 11 is, says, But if he cannot afford to bring two turtle doves or two pigeons, then he shall bring as his offering for his sin a tenth part of an ephah of fine flour as a sin offering. And this says that's a, um, a measurement, approximately one bushel. All right, so Allison, what do you have in your notes this morning from this chapter? Mine starts right out at verse number one. Let me read this verse number one to you out of the NIV translation. If anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about, they will be held accountable. Now, I don't know about other cities, but in New York City, they have this slogan, if you see something, say something. And I don't know if the posters are still up, but at one time they had posters everywhere, especially like in the subway, on in the subway cars, it always said, if you see something, say something, right? So that's what I thought about, because basically this is saying, if you have seen something, if you have witnessed something, or if you know something, if you learned about it, and there has now been a public charge, they're asking for people to come forward, right? And we see that on the news a lot of times when a crime is committed and they'll uh, give you some of the details. They might show the car or whatever it is that they're looking for, right? They'll ask people to call in with tips, right? They have the tips hotline you can call in. So basically this is saying if you sin by not speaking up when there has been uh, a request for people to come forward and tell what they know or what they have seen, right? You are responsible for that. If you fail to come forward as a witness to a crime or somebody has maybe confessed a crime to you, told you things, and you don't share that, you're responsible for that. All right, next one, it talks about touching anything. If you unknowingly touch anything that is ceremonially unclean, whether it's a wild animal or a domestic animal, um, it says, and if you're unaware of it, that you've become unclean, but then they come to realize their guilt or if they touch human uncleanness, any, anything that would make them unclean, even though they're unaware, unaware of it, once they learn of it and realize their guilt or if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to do anything, whether good or evil in any manner, one might carelessly swear about, even though they're unaware of it, but then they learn of it and you realize your guilt. It says, when anyone becomes aware that they are guilty, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still in the NIV. If anyone becomes aware that they're guilty in these matters, they must confess their sins. And as a penalty for that, so number one, you must confess. And number two, you have to pay your penalty. Number six, verse six, as a penalty for the sin they have committed, they must bring to the Lord a female lamb or a goat from the flock as a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for their sin. Now, when I heard this yesterday, because I listened to this on the audio Bible, when I first heard this or <clears throat> and when I read this, this immediately brought back to my days of having to go to confession as a child when I was in the Catholic Church. And we used to have to go and sit in the confessional booth and the priest was on the other side behind this veil. We would tell him all, of, all the things that we did that we thought we had, you know, we, that we knew about or remembered it, sins that we thought we committed or sins that we committed. Um, and we had to go con to confession and then he would give us, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't offer animals clearly, but he would tell us what it is that we had to do for, I believe they call it penance, right? So we had prayers that we had to pray and, and things like that. All right. So this took me back there. Um, Okay, the other thing that stood out to me here, if verse 11, if however they cannot afford two doves or two pigeons, they are to bring as an offering for their sin a tenth of an ephah of the finest flour for a sin offering. Here's the rule with that though. They must not put olive oil or incense on it because it is a sin offering. Now, what I thought of immediately when it says that they can't put incense on it, right? Incense has a fragrance and it's in and of itself, right? Um, I thought here that you can't, uh, uh, kind of like dress up your sin offering with a fragrance, a sweet smelling aroma or a sweet smelling fragrance. You have done something wrong, <clears throat> right? And that's really what I thought of as I read this. 
Um, that was verse 11. Verse 17, I have in my notes. If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though they do not know it, <coughs> they are guilty and will be head, held responsible. They are to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the wrong they have committed unintentionally and they will be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. They have been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. Now, let me flip back over here to the Amplified. I didn't really intend to stick with the NIV that long. And it's, this ends up, the last verse that I have in my notes this morning, this ends up, my notes conclude with the last verse of this chapter, verse 19. It is a guilt offering. He was certainly guilty before the Lord. Now, the one thing that really hit me with this last verse is human nature. A lot of times we will do something wrong. We will say something wrong. People get involved in a lot of shady stuff, right? And they try to do things behind closed doors, under the covers, in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark. And you try to hide things from humans. You try to get over. But the one thing that is always clear, and this really is a reminder for all of us, it says, verse 19, I'll read it again. It is a guilt offering. He was certainly guilty before the Lord. That's a reminder to all of us that even though we might be able to get away with things in this lifetime, we might be able to hide things from people, right? There is no hiding anything from God. So although it might feel like in the short term and sometimes in the long term, we have gotten over that we have been able to do things that nobody saw us nobody found us out <clears throat> right god sees and knows all and so you know i was thinking about this quite a lot it's crazy to me how we get more focused on hiding things from people and we're more concerned about that than the fact that we shouldn't be doing it at all because there is no hiding it from God and you will be held accountable. You're going to have to answer for those sins. So why is it that as human beings, we can be more worried about the short term. We could be more worried about people who cannot save us. They cannot rescue us, right? They don't control salvation. They have nothing to do with that. But we're more worried about pleasing people. We're more worried about hiding things from people instead of keeping our focus on God. I just thought about that. I was like, you know what? You might get over with people, but you don't get over with God. And so why is that our focus? Why, why are we more driven as humans in this sinful flesh? Why are we more driven? And that's really the answer, right? Why do we concentrate more on pleasing people a lot of times and that's not true for everybody right but you can get fall into pleasing people instead of what should be our everyday day goal which is to please God to walk upright and holy before God and not to have that get over mentality and not trying to you know get involved in shady things and think that we got over so just food for thought and just a reminder, verse 19, again, he was certainly guilty before the Lord. And we have to remember that anything that we do, any sin that we commit, whether other people are aware of it or not, we are still guilty before the Lord. So that should be our goal to stay free from sin, to get all of the foolishness, all of the sin, all of the reckless behavior, bad choices out of our lives and live 100% for the Lord. All right, family. So that's everything for today. This has been, again, Leviticus chapter five, Amplified Bible. Today, tomorrow we'll be reading um, chapter six, which the title here is Guilt Offerings, the Priest's Part in the Offerings. We have 30 verses tomorrow, okay? So um, for those of you that are watching the replay on YouTube, now I'm, in, I'm having to upload this from Facebook. So you will see two items pop up. One, you will see my 
profile picture, I ask that you click on that and subscribe. Join us as we read the Bible each day, Monday through Friday, every morning right now. We're reading at 9 a.m. Eastern. We're going book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And then you will also see a video card pop up. If you click on that, I will attach Leviticus chapter 6 when that becomes available. All right. But with that, family, I'm going to uh, say grace and peace, blessings. May the blessings of the Lord be evident in your life today. May the angels of the Lord go out before you to lead you and guide you. May today be easy and smooth for you. And may we gather tomorrow, 9 a.m. for the next chapter, which will be Leviticus chapter 6. All right, family, thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. Bye.